Okay. So, uh, dear minister, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends of Nordics and Nordic friends. My name is Sami Askelainen from Nordic Innovation House, and I'll be your host today. So it is my great pleasure to warmly welcome you all to our Smart Cities uh, program closing event. And before we start the webinar, uh, just a quick recap regarding the house rules as usual. Uh, please note that all the participants are automatically muted. Please also note that this session will be recorded. Uh, the recording and the presentation decks will be shared with all the participants in 24 hours. And uh, we have uh, three breakout rooms at the end of the session uh, where you can hear more uh, from those Nordic Smart City companies. And the links to these breakout rooms will be provided in the chat uh, multiple times today. So feel free to save the details from there in case you want to jump from one room to another one. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of uh, old friends with us here today, but also uh, for our new friends, I want to highlight a couple of things about Nordic Innovation House before we start. Nordic Innovation House is essentially a community platform accelerating, supporting, and helping high quality Nordic tech startups, scale ups, and growth companies that are coming to Singapore and then the Southeast Asia. And of course, many of them are using Singapore as a springboard for these markets. Uh, we are supported by the Nordic Council of Ministers and Nordic Innovation, which is an organization headquartered in Oslo. And uh, we have very unique collaboration uh, between the Nordic countries. And part of our Singapore team are Business Sweden, Innovation Norway, Embassy of Finland, and Vermont Iceland. Our work is, our daily work, I would say, is quite industry agnostic, but then we are running these market entry programs in these key verticals such as Med and Health Tech, which uh, run in September. Our sustainability and impact program will run in Q1 2021. And uh, then, of course, in the smart cities, which is obviously the reason why we are all here today. Uh, our program participants have met over 200 smart city stakeholders and experts from public and private side uh, last week, uh, uh, many of them being involved in the Pumno Bissau district here in Singapore. And this week, we have been focusing on uh, investor meetings and one to one meetings on top of our great closing event today. And if you want to meet uh, one of these companies who are presenting today, uh, please join the breakout rooms to hear more about their interesting and exciting uh, solutions, or alternatively, you can contact us and we can help you from them. Good. But let's move forward, and as we have a lot of ground to cover today with very exciting showcases and, and guests, we are very delighted and honored to have uh, Mr. Ville Skinnerik. Uh, Minister for Development Cooperation and Foreign Trade from Finland with us here today, delivering the opening remarks. After which we will have a very exciting panel during which we will hear uh, more different uh, smart city perspectives and learnings from the Nordics in Southeast Asia. I'm uh, really, really looking forward to this. Our moderator for this panel is Markus Kusinen from Business Sweden, and he will introduce uh, soon our panelists coming from the Nordics and Southeast Asia. The panel is then followed by a quick one minute showcase of 16 Nordic smart city companies. And after this, we will have a three breakout rooms in which you can hear more uh, from these companies and also ask some questions. Uh, this is highly, highly recommended. And like I mentioned earlier, the links to the breakout, the breakout rooms are available in the chat a couple of times today. Uh, but now, without any further ado, it is my great pleasure uh, to invite Minister Ville Skinner from Finland to deliver the opening remarks. Dear Minister Skinner, over to you. Good afternoon, or good morning from Helsinki. Hope you are all doing fine and are in safe. Um, but uh, let me start by saying that, first of all, this thing with the participants, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a, 
it's a great pleasure that you invited me to join today's uh, great program and the topic and to address this seminar on Nordic and uh, Southeast Asia smart city solutions. I will start by, by expressing my, my gratitude to the Nordic Innovation House in Singapore for organizing this highly important event. And uh, above all, my thanks to my, my special thanks go to the um, participants of the seminar who have gathered here today. And it, it gives me great joy to notice such a vast interest towards Nordic smart city perspectives and, of course, Nordic countries as a whole. The smart cities have been on our agendas for quite some time and uh, they continue to, to, to be a hot topic. Our seminar takes place just a few hours after the annual Smart Cities Summit and Expo organized by the um, ASEAN Smart Cities Network uh, was concluded in Hanoi. And what could be a better place to organize this kind of seminar than Singapore? I must say that I'm very happy to, to meet you and actually I was supposed to visit Singapore as, as our ambassador, Mr. Vanska, well knows, but unfortunately it wasn't possible. In September, Singapore was ranked first in the World Wide Smart City Index. I would like to congratulate all our Singaporean attendees for this great, great achievement. Even in the far away, well, here in, in Nordic countries, we are highly impressed by, by Singapore's success in building one of the most advanced urban environments in, in the world. And the same goes to other countries in Southeast Asia. We have seen impressive smart city development in cities like Kuala Lumpur, Jakarta, Hanoi, and uh, Ho Chi Minh City, and also smaller cities such as Phuket in Thailand have joined the, the smart city revolution. And while Singapore is ranked the most advanced smart city in the world, I'm proud to tell you that the second best city in the same ranking was the capital of Finland, Helsinki, followed closely by other Nordic capitals. I, I dare to call Finland and our Nordic neighbors forerunners and global leaders in the smart city development. For example, Finland launched its smart city strategy already in 2014. And since then, our largest cities have worked together and carried out ambitious projects for urban development laying the, the real basis for our current status. Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe that the capacity to innovate is the foundation of smart cities. The Nordic countries have all invented, invested heavily in innovation, not only because it is good, but also because it's necessary. As you may know, we live in an environment where the outside temperature varies from, say, plus 25 Celsius to minus 25 on any given year, forcing us to be creative. And um, combined with um, our transparent administration's emphasis on education and strong traditions in science and engineering, it's, it's not coincidence that our countries have regularly topped the lists of the most innovative nations in the world. However, innovations and technolo technological advances are not goal in themselves. Actually, Finland works not only for 
technology innovations, but also on social innovations. And the, the track record is pretty impressive. Solving the challenges that our cities and their residents face should be the driving force behind smart cities. For us in the Nordic countries, building smart cities is a quest for sustain, sustainability and a step forward achieving the sustainable development goals agreed by the United Nations. The global level of urbanization is increasing rapidly in cities, as we all know, this development puts pressure on living conditions, infrastructure and traffic. The growing number of urban residents also amplifies climate change and other environmental challenges. Cities are responsible for majority of global emergency consumption and carbon emissions. Smart cities are not a fix, fix for these challenges, but the concept can provide us with useful tools that benefit both citizens and the environment. It has been est estimated, for example, in, in the South uh, East Asia only, that uh, smart solutions could cut down greenhouse gas emissions by the amount of a medium-sized country and save 5,000 lives every year. Ladies and gentlemen, the smart city concept covers a wide range of solutions. I would like to highlight two sectors of particular importance for the future of our cities. First, smart, smart energy solutions have an important role in tackling the causes of climate change. Successful uh, climate strategy calls for clean energy sources and energy efficient innovations. Here in Finland, we have set probably the most ambitious goal in the world, becoming completely carbon neutral by the year 2035. In the Nordic region, there are numerous research teams and companies working on new energy solutions. Our countries are pioneers in renewable energy, smart grid development, and energy efficient construction. Finland's example is a case in point. Almost half of our electricity is already produced with renewable energy sources. Secondly, I would like to emphasize smart buildings, construction and city planning as the backbone of urban environment. These provide us with intelligent homes and workplaces, sustainable mobility services and advanced waste management solutions. They can also increase cities' resilience to natural disasters and climate change. The Nordic innovations in smart buildings and planning are abundant. Our companies have developed solutions from air quality monitors to self-learning buildings. And here in Helsinki, Finland, there is a district where garbage bins empty themselves and residents use shared cars and robots delivered food from the supermarket. But once again, the key is the implementation. We need the system level approach instead of separate projects and silos. We need scalability that we can also go towards successful business models and public private partnership. In other words, we need concrete deliverables. And that is exactly what Finland does, and that is exactly what Nordic countries do. Many of our companies present here today focus on smart buildings and construction. But their expertise can be applied to other sectors as well. 
The Nordic smart city solutions have proved to be affordable and sustainable in the long run. Ladies and gentlemen, there is another thing in smart city development that is far more important than technology. That is the people. Smart city solutions are useless unless they contribute to the well-being, life, quality, and living conditions of each and every citizen. The guiding principle for the smart cities should be the same as in the sustainable development goals. Leave no one behind. However, building smart cities should not be a top-down process where residents are left with the role of passive recipient. In the Nordic region, we believe that smart city development is a great opportunity for citizen involvement and active participation. Putting people first can mean different things. For example, in Nordic healthcare, digital tools and healthcare data are widely accessible to both professionals and patients contributing not only to the health of an individual, but also to building an efficient healthcare system. Another example comes from the Finnish capital Helsinki. The city has opened all its data for anyone to use. This way, citizens are able to participate actively in the creation of new services. Before I end, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to stress the importance of collaboration. The Nordic countries have worked together towards advanced digitalization, well-connected infrastructure, and inclusive societies. One of the keys to success has been the Nordic Smart City Network that joins 20 cities all around the Nordic countries. Similar success is also visible in the ASEAN Smart Cities Network. The Nordic countries and our companies here today are keen to cooperate with Southeast Asian partners. Indeed, there has been vivid cooperation between the Nordic and Southeast Asian smart cities actors. Finland and the Nordic Development Fund have sponsored ADB Ventures, which supports growing companies that offer sustainable solutions for Asian needs. I would like to thank ADB Ventures warmly for cooperation with the Nordic Innovation House in Singapore. Finland also promotes the development of, of um, sustainable urban environment by providing funding for the UN Technology and Innovation Lab Laboratory until located in our country here in Finland. Also, the United Nations Social Impact Investing Initiative has recently set office here in Helsinki. I'm also delighted to see the Singapore Global Center of the United Nations Development Program taking part in this seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, while cities are responsible for the majority of global carbon emissions, they also act as engines of economic growth. The future of our planet is closely linked with the future of our cities. I believe that the perfect time for smart and sustainable cities is right now. With these words, I wish you all most inspiring seminar. Thank you, and I really look forward to see you in Singapore or elsewhere. Thank you so much, Mr. Skinner, for your kind and very insightful words, and also those great examples. And, and likewise, looking forward to meeting you in person in Singapore. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, next, I will invite then our moderator, uh, Markus Kusinen, to take over and introduce our, our panelists. Markus, over to you. 
Perfect. Uh, thank you, Sami. Uh, so then we head over to the to the panel uh, of the day, and uh, uh, me that will be moderating today. Uh, I'm uh, Marcus Kostenen, and I, I work for Business Sweden here in uh, in Singapore. Uh, and my role in the Nordic Innovation House is that I'm the Swedish representative. Uh, but today, of course, it will be focused on, uh, on the panelists. So I think we have a really interesting. Uh, mix here today, so representatives from uh, from different parts of the world uh, and also from from a global perspective. Uh, so the the setup for this session will be that each of the the panelists uh, will have uh, approximately three to five minutes to uh, to introduce themselves. Uh, after that, uh, we will head over to the to to the panel and discuss uh, different topics within the smart city space. But uh, I will just you do a high level introduction first and then we will head over to each each one of them. Uh, so with us today we will have uh, Bradley Busetto, which uh, leads the, the UNDP Global Center for uh, Technology Innovation and Sustainable uh, Development based here in uh, in Singapore. We also have uh, Maria Lisa Ninikowski, uh, which is the CEO of Helsinki Business Hub. Uh, we have uh, Yudhistira Nuga, uh, that is the head of Jakarta Smart City. Uh, we also have, uh, as well, uh, Dinesh Naidu, that is the Deputy Director of Center for Livable Cities here in uh, in Singapore. But So first, as I mentioned, each one of them will have five minutes to introduce who they are and, and what their organizations are doing. So I will uh, let Bradley start to introduce uh, himself. Thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Marcus. Um, oh, great. The slides are on the screen, I think. Um, and a pleasure, um, Excellency and Mr. Minister, to, to also be here with you and, and frankly to be with um, representatives of, of two of the top ranked um, smart city nations, I guess, in, in the world. Um, so fantastic. Um, my name is Bradley. I'm, I'm the director of the still relatively new um, UNDP Global Center for Tech, Innovation and Sustainability um, based out of Singapore. Um, and our, our broader mandate is is essentially leveraging technology and innovation to drive sustainability in in the developing world and and we've um just started a, a a new focus which i think makes a lot of sense since we're based out of singapore on smart cities but thinking about smart cities in a in a different way and thinking about them in a more global way um, and about how to translate smart city visions into um, Africa and South Asia, um, touching upon some of the, the points that, that the um, minister has certainly made. Um, can we move to the next slide, uh, Marcus? Hello. Um, can you guys see my slides? Can everybody see slides? Oh, there it is, yeah. So I, the one point I wanted to make um, right off the bat, and again, it's essentially amplifying um, the minister's comments that uh, I think we should all um, uh, move the discourse to a different direction and, and not um, think about just sort of shiny tech driven um, first world smart cities, but think about smart cities in a much broader, much more global way. Um, so I just put some images up on the screen um, and just to tell a couple of stories within my allotted three minutes. Um, so Curitiba um, is, is um, a city um, in, in Brazil um, that developed one of the world's first bus rapid transit systems um, to get people on and off um, mass transit much faster, um, much more energy efficient. Um, Kathmandu is there too because they've pioneered even 20 years ago the use of electric taxis, um, mostly driven, driven by women um, and are doing some really interesting things around circular economy. Um, I've got Harare, um, Zimbabwe's capital there too. Um, that building you're seeing is one of the first um, buildings of any scale that uses um, natural cooling systems. Um, it's a big shopping center there. And then Dakar um, is there because they're doing some, at the really community level, really interesting um, work using um, uh, filtration systems during flooding to, to, to grow um, plants and vegetables. And so what, what's the com common element amongst all these really? It, the common element is it's, the smart city is based on smart citizens. Again, kind of amplifying what, what the um, minister has, has, has said. So maybe a, a message to leave us with is, um, well, two messages. Um, 
you know, a smart city for, for me and for, for us at UNDP is it's, it's about how do you make these urban environments livable, adaptable, and sustainable, but it's a second connected point is that it's not technology that helps us do that for the sake of technology. It's, it's about citizen driven technology and, and, and maybe even more precisely, um, using technology to get the expertise out of the citizens and, and have the citizens empowered to, to drive uh, change. And so that's the sort of work um, we're doing at the center um, and um, actually applying um, this, this notion of, of citizen, smart citizens um, and using appropriate, not the most expensive technologies necessarily to, to drive solutions um, in Africa and, and Asia. We've got about 15, 20 programs now um, across the world where it's very specific, very um, um, applied solutions. Um, and I wanted to leave you, um, just go to the last slide and then I'll, I'll stop, I promise. One more slide. Yes, um, and this comes um, from a colleague um, Singapore um, in GovTech, um, the folks essentially driving the technology driven smart city smart nation and in driving their um, incredible response to COVID-19. Um, it's about, it's a quote about the Trace Together app, which is so crucial in Singapore for controlling COVID-19. Um, so a killer last sentence, it's not sufficient to rely on technology alone as we need expertise in public health and communic communicable diseases to make sense of the data collected using this technology. So it's not just technology, it's the smart citizens uh, behind that, that that really makes a difference. And and these are the sort of new models and new approaches that we're trying to push, um, advocate for um, across the world. Thank you very much and look forward to a great uh, panel discussion and then um, hearing also about the startups too. Thank you. Perfect, thank you very much, uh, Bradley. So let, let's uh, move over to uh, uh, Maria Lisa. Uh, Marlisa, I believe that you are muted. Sorry, yeah, uh, okay. greetings. Uh, good, good morning from Helsinki. The sun is shining and we have a nice autumn day here. So my name is Marja-Lisa Niinikoski. I'm CEO of Helsinki Business Hub, which is a uh, uh, investment and trade promotion agency owned by the city of Helsinki and other cities here in the capital region. And nice to be and share uh, my views uh, about the smart city development in this panel discussion today. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we could say that the urbanization began in Helsinki rather late compared to many other cities in the world. But uh, in 60s, there were about 450,000 residents in, in the city. And a, a, a phase of intense construction started 80s. And then the number of residents uh, grew a little bit in that, uh, in that uh, decade. But when we come uh, to the recent decades, Helsinki, uh, the amount of residents residence has increased enormously here. And also Helsinki has been started to recognize as one of the leading smart cities in the world, as we have heard about the index already uh, set by the minister. But at the same time, it has meant many, many, many activities, not only one single action to be taken, but strategy level discussion, visions, as well as lots of practical empirical uh, pilots uh, going on around the city. Uh, that we can discuss uh, more details in the panel. Next slide, please. And what we think, think is really crucial for the smart city development is really to find the uh, urban districts where you can do empirical uh, experiments and then scale up, not only in the city, but also throughout the world. And uh, next slide, please. Kala Satama is one of the districts here in the city of Helsinki, where the city itself uh, has engaged a lot of uh, other stakeholders, citizens, companies, universities, uh, research institutions to, to pilot and cooperate 
there are interesting uh, experiments uh, related to smart mobility applications, smart energy uh, systems, et cetera, et cetera. And it has been a slogan that save an hour per day if you develop smart cities. So how you can make a living smarter that people can really concentrate on the on the key essence of, of living uh, and not wasting their time for trans transportation or, or, or things that are, are not uh, the most beneficial in, in people's life. Next slide, please. And one another uh, uh, district, what I want to mention is the old hospital here in the city of Helsinki. It's called currently Maria 01, which is already one of the leading uh, startup uh, campuses uh, in, um, in Nordic, and it's becoming one of the biggest uh, European uh, startup campuses uh, in next 10 years. There's a huge plan to develop smart startup campus. Uh, by in 10 years, there will be, or now in, 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 uh, in uh, five, six years, there will be 70,000 quadrant meters for this campus area to be developed as what part of the smart city and, and, and having um, this as a place also for testing uh, and implementing uh, new solutions. So in order to uh, conclude, I wanted just to, just to mention uh, some of case examples already in my, in my introduction that how it's about developing a smart strategy for the city and then engaging uh, with uh, citizens as well as with, with companies and universities really to go into practical details. And my slide, last slide, please. So uh, we really want to bring the message uh, to our uh, neighbors and, and other cities in the world. We have lots of material on uh, our web, web pages and, and also uh, would like to be in contact uh, with all of you also uh, in later on. Uh, if you are interested to share our experiences with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Maria Lisa. So let's uh, uh, jump over to uh, Judith Stira to, to continue the introduction. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to participate uh, in this uh, focus group discussion. So uh, from Jakarta's perspective, so smart city is the building the participatory ecosystem. So you can see on the slide, there is the left side, the notion of smart city 4.0 basically is initiated to improve uh, the active participation and engagement of the city co-creator, such as city stakeholder and resident for building a better Jakarta. Um, making sure that the city grew along with its citizen uh, as the minister said before. So the provincial government of Jakarta has changed the gear, turning the Jakarta into a more collaborative place for the citizen, uh, be it for the academic, communities, social organizations, startup, media, businesses, industries, and other government. So uh, realizing that a fruitful collaboration would be, wouldn't be sustained without a supportive ecosystem, so therefore, Jakarta Smart City has come into the spotlight. So the hype of brilliant young mind is emphasized to be a catalyst um, to uh, create the Smart City 4.0 ecosystem in the capital city in, in, uh, in Jakarta. So Jakarta Smart City is the innovation hub, uh, the matchmaker for the citizen as the co-creator to the government as the collaborator. So, so look at this slide. So through various emerging technology and innovation, so by using technology, innovation, and collaboration, such as big data, artificial intelligence, internet of things, cloud system, blockchain, and so forth and so forth, uh, Jakarta Smart City acts as the bridge for the citizen and the government in addressing the city problem and the fulfilling uh, the citizen need. This way, we can overcome challenges together, uh, creating an innovative city together and ensure the happiness of the citizen of Jakarta. Looking at the left side, the, the right side on the framework. So basically, this is translating the vision into a reality. So in the journey of building the Smart City 4.0 ecosystem, Jakarta Smart City has a, uh, has a solid foundation um, to ensure that every product and service is outcome-oriented to be achieved. 
So we introduced a Jakarta Smart City 4.0 framework to make a vision clear, understandable, implementable, and reality. So if we see one by one, Jakarta Smart City has a two main end uh, and the follow three values has four principles and a sit, a sit, uh, and then also five city co-creator and all to achieve six continuous result as an outcome and meet the seven indicator of the smart city. And look at, at on the on the on the on the circle. So we have two smart city and innovative and happiness, and also we have a, a three value. So quality of life, economic growth, and sustainable environment. So when we're talking about the smart city, so there's three values need to be considered. And uh, we have also four principles. One principle is a mobile, mobile come first. So in the wake of the smartphone era, Jakarta Smart City is the eager to present citizen service just one tap away. And the, our second principle is the uh, system and data driven technology. All this system making process is based on the data. And the, the third principle is a digital experience. So creating a smarter city is, isn't it just a matter of providing collaborative and supporting ecosystem for the betterment of the city, but also habitual a new lifestyle for the city. And let's say, for example, due to the pan, uh, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19. And the last principle is smart collaboration. Uh, come into fort, but act as the deciding point to ensure that the other three principles can be achieved and sustained. And we have also co-creators, our ecosystem. So is government as a collaborator and the citizen as a co-creator. Citizen can be communities, media, academic, businesses, industry, startup, and even other government. And we have also the outcome. So aligned with our uh, value and principle. We we strive for deliverable long-term outcome. More, more than just goal, we emphasize Jakarta as a city that equitable and inclusive to live in Jakarta with safe, comfortable, and positive environment. We aim to transform the potential of Jakarta to be more accountable and trusted, which will drive the economic impact. Uh, impact. Uh, so above all, Jakarta Smart City is here uh, to support uh, a safe data ecosystem to improve Jakarta as an eco-friendly and livable city. And lastly, finally, so the, to, the telltale of the smart city cannot be complete without its indicator, extending from smart people to smart branding indicator. And so there's a, an other smart economy, so smart government and smart economy, and smart living, and so forth and so forth. Jakarta Smart City adopting this indicator as the measure in harness our value, principle, and outcome. So these indicators are acting as the tool for the action and the checkpoint for a better man of Jakarta. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's uh, move over to, to, the, to the, the final one to present for all the panelists, and that will be Dinesh. Good afternoon from Singapore and thank you Marcus and the Nordic Innovation House for the invitation. Today I'll be sharing a Singapore perspective on developing as a smart city or rather a smart nation as we call it in Singapore. Let me briefly introduce my organization for now, the Centre for Livable Cities. We are a think tank within the Singapore government and we study and support the development of more livable and sustainable cities through our research, training programs, and advisory work, as well as the area that I lead our knowledge platforms, which includes our flagship World City Summit. Uh, the World City Summit is held alongside Singapore International Water Week and Clean Enviro Summit Singapore. And together we attract over 24,000 people, making it one of the largest events on the world's sustainability calendar. Our knowledge platforms include also publications like our Urban Solutions and Better Cities magazines, as well as our lectures and webinars. And together, these platforms connect us to a global network of over 50,000 ministers, mayors, government officials, leaders from the corporate sector, universities, and international organizations like UNDP. Now, our practitioner-centric work focuses on urban governance and planning systems at a broad and high level rather than uh, deep technical knowledge. CLC's signature research product is our Urban System Studies or USS series, 
which documents Singapore's transformational experience over the last half century across various urban systems, such as our housing system, water or transport systems. Today, or rather later on during the discussion, I will be drawing on our USS research that documents uh, Singapore's smart nation journey. And you can use the QR code if you're interested to read the free book online. Um, published in 2018, this research was guided by Dr. Tan Chin Nam, a retired top civil servant in Singapore and one of the pioneers in our smart nation journey. The book draws on exclusive interviews with him and several others. Um, I also want to mention that CLC was instrumental in helping to establish the ASEAN Smart Cities Network or ASCN, which was discussed earlier uh, by the minister. Um, it was uh, one of the key outcomes of Singapore's chairmanship of ASEAN in 2018, when the inaugural ASEAN workshop was held at the World Cities Summit. This network comprises 26 cities, including Jakarta, and all the capitals of ASEAN. Each city is represented by a chief smart city officer, in addition to a national representative of each of the 10 member states. Now, as part of our contribution, CLC helped to develop this ASEAN framework as a guide to facilitate smart city development in each ASEAN city. The framework identifies three strategic outcomes of a smart city, a high quality of life, competitive economy, and a sustainable environment. And these three strategic outcomes are underpinned by two urban systems, uh, integrated master planning and development, and also dynamic and adaptive urban govern governance. Below these six development policy areas are identified, such as health and well-being. And only finally, the framework rests on a foundation of digital infrastructure and applications and partnerships and funding. So you will notice that technology is not very explicit at all in this uh, smart city framework as uh, technology is very much positioned as an enabler rather than an end in itself. Uh, very similar to what Minister Skinari and uh, Bradley said earlier. So if you'd like to learn more about the ASCN and its framework, you can use the QR code to access our free book online. I would also like to encourage all of you to join us at the WCS Smart Cities Workshop which we are planning as part of our hybrid WCS in June next year. Uh, so I'll pause here and hand the mic back over to Marcus. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks uh, a lot, uh, Dinesh. Uh, so let's head over to the, to, to the discussion. Um, so if we look at the, the, the first uh, topic that I would like to, to raise uh, today, as, as a smart city is a very broad topic and it's a, it's a lot of different stakeholders and, and resources uh, involved in, in the development of smart city. So maybe uh, if, I, if I start with you, you Dinesh, like, what do you see as kind of the, the, the key stakeholder and resources that are kind of required in, in developing a, a smart city? Um, absolutely. So of course, uh, the private sector is important, the people sector is important, and the public sector. And we often see the public sector as the agent in all of this. Um, but in the Singapore experience, actually, one of the key stakeholders is the public sector itself. Uh, senior political leaders have played a very important part in uh, setting a vision and goals and deploying resources like talent, funds, and their own strategic focus. Uh, I have a quote from the first chairman of our National Computer Board in 1980. Uh, and he said, I remember when we put up a proposal to the then minister Tony Tan to set up the NCB, we said we needed a hundred million Singapore dollars. And he said, he just said, okay. And he put it up to parliament. Uh, Philip Yeo called this an act of faith. There was a sense of urgency to get things going. I'll give you one more quote, um, quite an unusual quote from our Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Lee Sien Lung. Just three years after he announced the Smart Nation Initiative, he said in a dialogue, uh, I think personally that for all our pushing, he said, we really are not going as fast as we ought to. So that's very candid, I thought, um, uh, and uh, sharing about where he felt uh, the initiative was going, but the point here is simply that leadership at that level that takes uh, these initiatives seriously and is committed to doing what it takes uh, to, to get them to succeed has been a very important stakeholder. The public service itself is huge uh, and it requires a lot of change management and transformation to get institutions and, and members uh, to embrace technology. And here, uh, I was 
interested to learn that um, when we started our drive in the 1980s, uh, an Institute of Systems Science was set up to train our pool of IT professionals, but it was also tasked to conduct uh, senior executive programs for ministers, permanent secretaries, and directors in the civil service to garner support for the computerization plan, since many of them would have had no idea what computers were. Uh, so that is the kind of uh, engagement with these stakeholders. Um, maybe I'll stop there and we can talk about private sector or other stakeholders later on. Perfect. Thank, thank you, Dinesh. And, and, and Bradley, you, you, you work with mul multiple cities uh, around the world. So do you see kind of the, kind of the, the key stakeholders in, involved in kind of developing a smart city? Is, is that different compared to the different cities you work with? Or is it quite similar regardless of where, which city you're focusing on? Apologies for the delay, struggling to unmute myself. <laughs> um, no worries. So, I mean, I think it, 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 you know, it clearly depends city by city. Um, Dinesh just pointed out, um, you, know, you know, the Singapore example, um, and in Singapore, um, the, the strategic leadership has been so critical, right? The sort of the foresight um, from many years ago to, to put something like this together and build it upon a, an incredible foundation of, 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 uh, you know, technology and research and, and, and development, and then beyond that foundation, education too. Um, but across the world, what we're really seeing too is, is, is you know, it's, it's the leadership, not just of, of say the top civil servants, but, but of community leaders too, right? Um, and so one of the theses that we're testing is we're, we're, we're doing it, we're calling a multi-city challenge uh, for smart cities in Africa. And Africa is important because within just a few years, there'll be a hundred cities in Africa, over a million people, right? With over a million people in them. So, uh, you know, um, sustainability, that, solving the sustainability problem, which is kind of the problem of living on planet earth, right? Is, is, uh, is about solving the, the, the urban um, sustainability problem. So it's smart cities are, and, and more sustainable cities are hugely important in Africa too. Um, and so we're running this multi-city challenge and it's about, um, you know, how do we, how do we um, help policymakers there um, become smarter policymakers, right? And, and to do that, I mean, it's it, the conceptually pretty simple. And um, we're, 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 we're pooling expertise, we're gathering expertise from different cities. That's why we're having multi different cities involved. Um, and, and, and so these policymakers say one town, in one city in Ethiopia can, can, can gain knowledge from another in, in Kenya. Um, and, and so, you know, fundamentally, it's pretty, pretty simple um, thesis, right? Um, of course, we'll, we'll make it, um, we'll use the latest approaches for data and bring technology where it makes sense um, and where it's affordable. But, but the key thing is, you know, starting at the real base, of it, the base of this pyramid, the base of this whole thing, is how do we make better, smarter policymakers, smarter citizens, and then smarter policymakers, right? So that's where we're seeing the leadership. And you know, the examples that I quoted were were all driven by community leaders, to be honest. Perfect. Thanks a lot. And then, and then, and throughout the history, for in your case, uh, Maya Lisa, for 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 Helsinki, kind of what's what's it's been kind of the the key stakeholders in, in the Helsinki example in the, in the development of, of, of the smart city ecosystem in, uh, in, in Helsinki? Uh, I think that the role of the city has been uh, really important. Uh, what was said already by the uh, opening remarks um, uh, from the minister, uh, Ville Skinnari, is that Helsinki is one of the cities uh, who has opened the data because for me, uh, the smart city development is really data driven. If you want to build a smart city, you need to understand like of the key indicators, what you want to develop in the city. And at the same time, it's not only the, the end uh, impact kind of the uh, uh, less, um, less carbon emissions or things like that. But at the same time, you need to understand that what is the way which will bring you to the end result. And, and uh, therefore, I really emphasize uh, the role of data in developing smart cities. And, and Helsinki has been one of the forerunning cities uh, when they started the, 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 to open the data, which can be used for, for smart city development. And then on the other hand, I think that um, 
what's crucial as, as, a, as a city, as a key stakeholder in this development, the current strategy of the city of Helsinki formal designed uh, uh, four and a half years, uh, three and a half years ago, is to become the most functional city in the world. So to be functional for the citizens and, and for any uh, entities uh, working, living and, and, and acting in the city. Uh, so there needs to be a vision where you want to go. And, and then I, I really uh, want to emphasize also in that respect, the, the role of the city to really uh, create the data policy, what they have done currently, and at the same time, um, uh, uh, integrating the data policy in various parts of the uh, city administration, uh, from transportation and logistics uh, to uh, energy sector, as well as then later on education and, and healthcare, what was also discussed uh, already in the opening remarks. So, but then engaging people, to the, 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 the citizens, which have been really taken into account when developing new city districts and, and new solutions. And then the companies who can develop the, the pro products and solutions for citizens and for the city. So um, as said by Bradley, I also kind of uh, really uh, argue and, and, and want to highlight the role of the community leaders that someone will build the vision that where we want to go and then engage and also develop the tools. That's, I would say, from, from the Helsinki experiences. Perfect, thank you. And, uh, and Yudhisthira, from, from your perspective, as you mentioned in your, uh, your introduction as well, the kind of the, uh, the in interaction between the, the private and the, and the publics. Uh, so how, how do you see that uh, interaction, Yudhisthira, like the, the, the private-public partnership in, in developing a, a smart city? Okay. So I think, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, thank you. So, so public-private partnership is the uh, one thing that we need to uh, consider to de develop the smart city, not only based on the the national budget, but we 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 need to look at another sources to uh, to establish a smart city. But uh, looking at the our uh, our four principle, one of our four principle is smart collaboration. So, we see that. Uh, all the problem is not uh, slowly done by the government. We need to collaborate. We need to engage with our co-creator, which are citizen, industry, startup, and, and other, uh, any other sector. So the, the question is, uh, how do we define the new business model in the smart city? So therefore, in Jakarta Smart City, we, we establish state of support uh, uh, in digital, uh, uh, in in establishing uh, uh, the digital ecosystem in Jakarta, so we consider Jakarta as a playground. Let's say, for example, we give it an access to API or open data, so data as a hub. So, so uh, frankly speaking, so data can be uh, has a, a great value to any other stakeholder that want to collaborate with us. Let's say, for example, we collaborate with the transport uh, company. So we give the, uh, them access to API data so they, uh, they can make use those data to, to deliver better services to our citizen in terms of the transport uh, services. And the second scheme, uh, the third scheme is, uh, the, second, the second scheme is uh, co-develop. So we see that this scheme, so we work together with the company, let's say for a startup. So we pitching our problem. So we saw our problem and the startup help us to resolve it. So this is the way how we uh, work with uh, uh, co our co-creator. And the third scheme is the consumer. So many, uh, many startup or many big startup already has, uh, already have the, the a proven uh, concept or proven uh, platform. So, so for the proven concept of a platform, Jakarta can become the customer. Let's say, for example, so we collaborate with the some startup like Gojek, Grab to provide the disability service, disability transportation for disability uh, people in Jakarta. So. So those service not only providing by the government, so startup, uh, private sector can also support the initiative. So uh, in short, so basically in short, uh, so 
to to sum up so we we establish the collaborative sandbox so collaborative sandbox is a platform for um for uh problem owner and problem solver some some uh, some event that uh, already done so this kind of, kind of like a uh, uh, discussion between the government and the technology company to bring innovation in the uh, solving city problem by making jakarta as a playground as as i mentioned before through clearly establishing a corridor to create a sustainable digital ecosystem in in jakarta so in short so we we going to define Uh, a good business model in making uh, a better Jakarta. I think that's that's the the the, the point that I I, uh, I would like to say. Perfect. And and then uh, as we have heard many different stakeholders now. It's uh, startup, government stakeholders, community leaders, etc. So Dinesh, how, how do you see like how do you keep all this together? Like how if you look at from a kind of a, a governance and, and leadership. Very specific. Like how how do you keep this all together so to make it a well well functioning as much city Dinesh? How, how how do you see that? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, you you are for for Dinesh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I I think um uh, talking about this ecosystem and in the example of government working with the private sector or even the people sector, I think one of the things in Singapore's experience is to acquire some clarity about the role of government in this ecosystem. So one of the things that Singapore does is we're very clear, government's role is to provide the network infrastructure, the hardware, those sorts of things. Uh, this includes digital infrastructure. It includes technology commons. So things like digital uh, IDs, payment systems, things that are resource intensive uh, and, and uh, quite suitable for a government to do and which will then Um, spawn and encourage the, the development of the sector at large. Um, things like training, education, uh, provision of open data, which people have been talking about, cybersecurity. So these are things that government, government provides, but then um, there is engagement and partnership with different types of people. So for example, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises that are not tech companies, right? That may not be very tech savvy, or even citizens who are not very tech savvy. Singapore has... Uh, invested a lot of effort in closing the digital gap. Uh, there are so many schemes, uh, training sessions for, for older people. Uh, there have been schemes to recycle personal computers from government, refurbish them and give them to low income households with um, IT training and, and, and internet service, things like that. So there are those kinds of support for certain kinds of firms. Then for startups, you know, we've heard some of the things uh, that uh, other cities are doing. They happen in Singapore too. We have innovation hubs, we have grants, we have co-investments, networking opportunities, loads of ways to promote the startup sector. And then finally, for the larger firms, there are other ways to engage them, uh, to give them opportunities to grow and prove themselves and to develop exportable products and services. Perfect, thank you. Uh, and then, of course, like in a, in a city, you can you can measure it in 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 so so many ways. So it would be interesting to to get a, like a a short answer from 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 all of you. Kind of what's like when you measure a smart city, what like what should you measure? So so what are kind of the the key KPIs that are you utilized in the different cities that uh, that you work with? So I maybe start with you, you Bradley. What what do you see as the key KPIs for uh, for a, for a, for a smart city? Muted again. Sorry, I'm not. Uh, no I have a small child. <laughs> I'm trying to manage at the same time. Um, apologies. Um, so you know, Bhutan is the kingdom of of happiness, right? So in Bhutan, it's it's happiness is the number one metric. Um, but I would, um, you know, it, I would suggest um, really qualitative ones like well being um, and happiness too, and diversity. Um, those would be. Um, they, they don't need to be technometric uh, metrics, right? Or technocentric metrics um, in a sense. Um, so um, yeah, I would, I would choose those yeah. would be high on my list, I suppose. All right, and for, in Helsinki, Marilisa, what's kind of the, the key areas that are measured, like key KPIs uh, when evaluating kind of if you're a well-functioning uh, smart city? So I think that smart city development is in line with the sustainable development of cities. 
And therefore, it's good to develop your probably your own indicators that how you see the process. But at the same time, what I see is uh, what has been important for the city of Helsinki, because it was the second city in the world after New York who started to uh, report according to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So at the same time, like um, like what Bradley said, is the is the happiness. Although we are the happiest country in the world as well, but uh, according to the some rankings. But but what I see is like to uh, to benchmark uh, with internationally interesting comparisons. What I would say for smart cities is also maybe utilize the sustainable development goals and report according to them. So as said, Helsinki started that as the second uh, city in the world. And, and furthermore, then I see what is also important because they are like very general overall uh, uh, indicators is to look what you are really doing. So if you emphasize that uh, open data is, is important, so what kind of data you have been able to, to open and if you see that experimenting is important, so in which areas you have the experiments going on and how many, et cetera, et cetera. So I see that uh, although in the end of the day, it's the question of quality of life of people, which can be from happiness to the uh, functionality of the city, but at the same time, as a community leaders, you need to understand that where we are going with our practical actions. So I emphasize like the ultimate goals, but also the kind of the understanding the progress at the same time on the way. Right. Thank you. And how, you just did, how, how is that in your character? Kind of what's the key KPIs that you're measuring in, uh, in your development of uh, becoming a smart city? Well, yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. So, uh, so basically, uh, I back to the, the, the definition of the word smart city. So uh, in general, there is no certain uh, consensus, uh, consensus of what is a smart city. But one thing that we could all agree that every city is unique. So let's say, for example, this, uh, we can uh, compare with Jakarta and Singapore. It's a different. So every city is unique. So it has its own mark and branding. So each one of them has their own values and this, this value a tribe to be a city they have imagined about. So looking at Jakarta, one of the most fabulous city in the world emerged from fourth city into metropolitan one that uh, vibrant the, the diversity and culture. Those who come to Jakarta could find anything, it tastes glimpse of every corner of Jakarta. So so will of the, uh, the the changes and those conditions so we jakarta uh, jakarta try to adapt and actualize the vision into reality so leading the smart city initiative in jakarta sounds tempting but there are a uh, more crucial goal that we we have in mind so certain target of jakarta lies into two modes keyword as i mentioned that how jakarta to become an innovative city and the, the, the second keyword is the happiness. So the word might turn technology, innovation, technology, innovation, and collaboration continue. But our value remind innovation for the happiness of the citizen of Jakarta is paramount. So in, in, in short, so uh, talking about smart city, we need to consider three value. So how we can improve the quality of life, how we can improve the economic growth, and then the lastly, how we can make sure our uh, environment can be sustained and so forth. And, 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 and that's it. Thank you very much. Maybe if we have you, Dinesh, if we move on a little bit to the, to the next area, but as, as mentioned a couple of times here now in, uh, during this uh, webinar about kind of that Singapore is, there are so many different rankings, right? Uh, globally uh, for kind of which are the most high, top ranked smart cities, et cetera. But uh, what is, you, you always see is kind of Singapore is always in, uh, in, in the top of those rankings. So what, what, what is kind of the, why is, what's the secret sauce behind that? Why, why is, is Singapore so, so, so successful and always come in the top of those, those rankings? Um, so I think uh, that there are three things that I would highlight here. One is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the role of government has been, in the case of Singapore's own experience, quite important in providing that leadership. The second is uh, inclusivity uh, has been very important priority. And also, I think, uh, trust and transparency. So, um, I mean, I think that, that 
technology has a, has a bit of a trust issue all around the world. But uh, I think relatively speaking in Singapore, maybe uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty decent, the, the, the level of trust that people have in the systems here. So that's been a, an asset. Um, and then finally, uh, I would say, I think maybe this, I mean, personally, I think that the, the secret sauce might be that for Singapore, um, it has consistently been seen as a necessity, uh, not a nice to have or a, a personal project or something. I think as a small uh, resource scarce uh, city state, you know, with an aging population, uh, Singapore always feels this sense of vulnerability and technology is seen as a way to mitigate or overcome the limitations of size. Uh, and so it's taken very seriously as, as almost a matter of survival. Thank you. And uh, Maria Lisa, ba based on what uh, Dinesh said now, and it's the same similar with, with Helsinki as well, it's all, also as well in the, the top of the list when it comes to rankings, that, uh, uh, when it comes to being a, one of the most successful smart cities globally as well. Well, is it similar to us in the Dinesh case, or is it, is it a different story for why, why Helsinki is in the, in the top rankings? Maybe I think there are uh, lots of similarities, but what I also want to emphasize and which, which, which has been also discussed here is I would say also um, uh, education of people because like we have lots of um, invested in Finland in, in educating, educating people. So there is always thinking behind that when people can understand what is the benefit for them from the smart city development, as I said, also integrated with the sustainability of societies uh, currently. Uh, so uh, I think that um, uh, that people can understand and how they can understand, I think that when they understand the phenomena itself and, um, uh, and can be part of the development. So it's not a, what we have already discussed, not a technocratic uh, uh, activity, but uh, it's about trust, it's about engaging, it's building something good for everyone. So I think uh, then uh, if I want to sum up, you need to have a vision, you need to take everybody with and make practical uh, concrete actions. That's for me uh, the most crucial and, and uh, it has been. I think that that has been also the model that tried to follow here. In Thank you. And, and if I may ask you, Bradley, the, the, you're working with many different uh, like cities around the world and, and there are a lot of cities that are just in the, kind of the, the beginning of their kind of smart city journey. Uh, so are there kind of any low hanging fruits for, for a city that is just starting to think, like uh, starting the journey to becoming a smart city? Where, like, are there any low hanging fruits areas they can, they can start with? Um, well, I can tell you some that um, are popping up that, that um, seem to be of, of real interest to the, the sort of maybe, I don't know if it's not in a derogatory sense, but these second um, tier cities that don't get a lot of attention that we're working with um, in Asia and Africa. Um, it's around, you know, mobility, um, around waste management um, are the real needs. So then waste management links into notions of circular economy um, <clears throat> and figuring out um, cleaner means of, of energy production and, and food production and and then interesting questions about how do we how do we design our systems for food production um, do we start thinking more in, in cities like Lagos or, or Jakarta about um, urban farming in affordable ways right so to, to reduce the like the emissions cost and the energy cost to bring food for so many millions of people in these urban areas and, and then think about all the waste and so forth so lots of interesting questions there but so mobility waste management um urban agriculture um some of the things that are popping up maybe as emerging issues in um the urban spaces in the developing world um of course interesting opportunities too around um informal settlements um and you see now more and more informal settlements and townships in um, various parts of the world um driving solutions right coming up with their own <clears throat> citizen-led you know, tech solutions, it could be about lighting, it could be about mobility, it could, you know, what, what energy for that, that their township um, settlement. So these are some of the things that are popping up and are a pressing concern to, to um, some of the cities we're working with. Um, um, and just to note, um, the Singapore Week of Innovation and Technology is coming up um, in, um, at the end of this year, or early December. And, and by that time, we're doing a lot of work on what we call smart cities um, archetypes. 
so we're figuring out kind of a new way of, of describing um, smart cities um, around the world um, in a more global way, um, thinking about um, kind of indigenous um, examples, um, alternative examples. And, and we'll be, we're doing research on, the, on this right now and we'll, we'll be um, sharing that, that research at, at um, the Singapore Week of Innovation and Technology in December. So stay tuned to Twitter, or participate in that too. And we'd like all of you um, on this panel and engage in this discussion to, to, to engage with us too um, on all this. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Brandy. It was actually the, the last uh, topic we had uh, time to, to discuss today. So uh, next up here now will be uh, our different uh, startups that are participating uh, in our market entry program uh, that will be uh, introducing themselves. But then uh, big thanks to, to all four of you that uh, participated here today in the, in the panel. So I will uh, hand back to you, uh, Samir. Great. Thank you so much, Marcus, and, and uh, thank you for all the panelists for this exciting conversation and sharing all the details. I was taking fiercely a lot of notes here, and uh, I wrote my own secret, uh, secret source for the smart city, and that goes, citizen-driven technology with open data and good community leaders drive sustainable happiness. So that's my, my version for smart city today. All right, but next is time to uh, move forward and then uh, basically hear more about our companies. So uh, we will have 16 companies here with us today for the Nordics. These are the, uh, the Smart City uh, program participants. Uh, all of them will do a quick one minute pitch and uh, you are then able to hear more of them and about the great solutions in our breakout rooms and we will again post those uh, links to the, to the chat soon. Uh, we have split the companies in uh, four different groups. Uh, group one is all about ICT and IoT solutions, group two is engage and manage, and then the group three is about construction and then uh, group four is about others. And the rules will be group one, uh, is room number one, group two is in group two, and then uh, room three is group three and 